Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Skylar. During quarantine, we decided to start watching Bob's Burgers to see what it was all about. It didn't take long for us to become completely obsessed with the show. But one of the things we love the most are the brilliant end credit sequences. Which is why we created this podcast. Each week, we're going episode by episode to talk about the elaborate end credits. We're excited to have you join us on the very first credit score spinoff, Bob's Credits. We'll make sure the Bob's Burgers end credits get the credit they're due. Hello. Skylar to the left of me, biscuit to the right. Here I am, mm. stuck in the chip chip a Oh, oh. Huh, did you see that coming? I didn't. And that song is going to be relevant to this episode today? Absolutely. I'm not just, I knew that. I'm not just I coming in here research. and saying like, oh, chip chip a anymore. No, now I'm really like, I'm giving these chip chip a life. And you know what? I will embrace it with an open heart now. Because we've had yet another fan reach out in support of the Chip Chip Aroos. Yes. Allie. Allie. Yeah. And let me just say, from the few DM interactions I've had with Allie, she is a delight. And if she loves Chip Chip Aroo and our other fan, Allison, loves Chip Chip Aroo, you know what? I'm on board now. Yeah. Um, another fan, I think, I believe Mandy was lukewarm about Chip Chip Aroo, but that tips in favor of Chip Chip Aroo when we're getting all these uh, support, all the support for Chip Chip Aroo, I think. Okay. I so, think that's the rule. Okay. That's fair. As much as I love Chip Chip Aroo and I have on the record said I support it now, I'm going to change directions. And say No. To Chip Chip Roo. No, no, we're keeping it. Oh. It's good. Okay, but good. Because I just recorded an Instagram video of me doing it on there, too. I was there. So it's really, yeah. I was there. <laughs> okay. It's, if it's on the gram. It's official. It's, it's official. But there is something I just have to say before we start our episode. So there's something I have to put officially on the record before we start our episode. Okay. Um, it's like Halloween season now by the time this goes live. It'll be like Thanksgiving It'll season. It'll be like Thanksgiving <laughs> season, but, but we are recording this before Halloween. Yes. And the Bob's Burger Halloween episode has been postponed until November 1st. Yeah, for the new season that's on right now. Exactly, season 11. We've been waiting desperately for it. But a couple episodes back... I told you that I have the best opening van pun for a Halloween episode. And I want to say my idea now because I just know that they're going to use it. You think it's going to be in this coming, exactly. upcoming episode? I have to get it down so now. So this is recorded. People, if you need proof that this is recorded, we will send you the file that has the date and time on it. Just in case they use it in the upcoming. October 24th. Yeah. That is today. Yes. Okay. We'll need a picture of you holding up the newspaper from today. <laughs> <laughs> okay um so your van so the van our, yeah only a halloween episode mm -hmm. texas chainsaw massacre uh, i love it i don't know how they haven't used it when i thought of it i was so proud of myself skylar and i through the opening credits or every now and then we'll like blurt out one that comes to our mind when we're watching the show yeah and that skylar blurted that one out once and i was like that is gold i was shocked uh if they haven't used that they have to use it if they do use it you get full credits even if they don't hear it you say it right yeah you okay. you own it. i think you copyrighted it yes definitely Copy, i'm definitely the it. only Co person copy wrote it copyrighted i think it's copyrighted mm. uh, who cares yeah <laughs> we, we mess up a lot of words on this podcast anyway um I thought that was just vital to say. Yeah, I'm really glad you did. And this is a great segue into our favorite segment of the podcast, Bob Pun or Max Pun. Okay. Are you ready for your puns? I'm ready. Okay. You're forced, you're forced, you're forced to sit through me delivering these puns to you, Skylar. You're forced. There what go is going on? <laughs> I'm, my brain is breaking down live. Um, your first pun is Mambo number chive. Bob. No. <gasps> that is so good. I've said I know, before I know. that sometimes Bob and I have the same brain and I choose one and it ends up being on the show. I don't think that one is was used. That it is fantastic. Be yeah. Um, for your sister. Uh, Alex. Alex. Uh-huh. Your younger sister. Uh-huh. 
and our younger listeners. Yeah. Would you like to give us a little clip of Mambo Number 5? Oh, I sure would. Let me pull it up. No, no, no. Oh, you, you want me to sing it? Yeah. A little bit of Monica in my life. A little bit of Erica mm. by my side. A little bit of Tina's what I knew. A little bit. Wow, I, I don't you know, know the more lyrics. Names. <laughs> <laughs> I run out of them. Tina would be thrilled that she made it into those lyrics. Yeah, I think there is a Tina in there. And a um, Rita. There's, there's, there's definitely very, a Rita. Like, it's like elderly women names towards the end. Yeah, probably they're, bit, they're cougars, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, but that was my a life in middle school. A little bit of Meryl. <laughs> I don't know, there's no Meryl in that song. Susan. A little bit of Edith in my life. <laughs> Ethel. Ethel. <laughs> Ethel. Um, okay, that was fantastic. I love it. Okay, your next burger pun is the Breaking Radish Burger. Oh my god. This is so hard because Max is such a huge Breaking Bad fan. He just wiggled his eyebrows at me. Um, well, I was going to I was going to do like a Jesse Pinkman like yeah, bitch. But you didn't want to call me a bitch. Yeah, well, and I also didn't I don't do a good Jesse Pinkman. Well, that's pretty good. Well, that's the best I can do. Um, I'm going to go Bob you're correct. I, I was trying to fool you, you on were, that one. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was trying to yep. uh, mambo number chive you a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to start using it as a verb. Okay, which means to trick someone. But yeah, from now on, people, if you want to trick someone, your mambo, your, mambo, your mambo number chiving them. Okay, fantastic. Okay, your next pun is the Cajun gracefully burger. Dead air. <laughs> Aging gracefully is such a weird term for either of you to be playing off of. And I don't know why. I, Max. It's Max, I guess. It is Bob. No. Sorry. Why, Bob? <laughs> why? <laughs> and your last burger pun is the coleslaw and order burger. Oh, that's so good. Max. Yes. Okay. Because it's so good. Although, again, I feel like that would be a common one on there. I don't know. I feel like there would be a coleslaw and burger on there. I don't know. That's it. I know he's definitely done, like, a slaw as a... Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, we're ready to get into this episode? So, we are on Season 2, Episode 7. Yep. Skylar, can we have a title and synopsis, please? So, this week's episode is Moody Foodie. When three restaurants are closed down because of a food critic's horrible reviews, the three restaurateurs, Reggie, Tran, and Pepe, warn Bob he's next. And he is. The Moody Foodie, as he's called, slams Bob's burgers after the family and Bob choke while waiting on him. So Bob, groceries in hand, finds the Moody Foodie's house and demands a redo. The innocent redo quickly turns into a hostage situation, the whole family and Reggie, Tran, and Pepe eventually all showing up. There's duct tape, there's wet willies, there's dancing in front of the Moody Foodie a la Reservoir Dogs ear-cutting scene. And that's the song I was singing at the beginning of this, but we'll get into that. This Yeah, no spoilers. This episode was released on May 6, 2012. It was written by Stephen Davis and Kelvin Yu and directed by Buwon Lim and Kyung Hee Lim. This episode, you named uh, a lot of characters that own these restaurants along with Bob. So we are introduced to a lot of new characters um, like Reggie, Pepe, and Chirac. Is that what we said his name was? Oh, I have Tran. Oh, interesting. Was there four? No. He's four. No. No? Yeah, there's four. Then there's Reggie. Who's Sandwich the old guy. guy? Pepe, who owns the Mexican restaurant. Tran owns the noodle place, uh -huh. and Chirac owns the. I don't think there's, there's a fourth four. person. He must be the UPS guy. Oh, he's the character drawer. Yeah. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let the record show that I am correct. <laughs> okay, so Chirac <laughs> is the character, the guy that draws like. Uh, and I, I guess, feel like he's I guess reoccurring. he has multiple. Yeah, he's yeah. reoccurring. So it is a character introdu introduction. Um, he draws like the caricatures on the boardwalk. For they Tina. love creating names through careers, like more. Yeah. 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 Um, he's voiced by David Herman, who does Mr. Frond, as we've said oh. in the past. Um, some of the voices for these new characters we've been introduced to are, um, Oscar Nunez from the office does Pepe. And we've seen him I before in the past, I think him. on an episode and yes. I forgot which voice he did. And... Those are the uh, Eddie Pepitone and Russell Peters do the other two, and they're Look both at comedians. Wendy. She she just cleans up. 
Wendy Molyneux does the voice on here too. Yeah, because we found out that she does the voice of the that babysitter we love who has not been introduced she yet. She does. Yeah. You already told me that. Yeah. I love that babysitter. And yeah. she was the um, dental hygienist in the episode Dr. Yap. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I also see that um, Holly Schlesinger, who writes a bunch of episodes, one mm-hmm. of the writers does a voice on this one too. So they all like so kind of like fun. pop in and get to do voices occasionally, which is got to be so much fun. Yeah. Like you said. Um, this is also the first episode where we meet Mike the Mailman. It is? Yeah. I love that character. Voiced by Tim Meadows, who we love. And I will tell Skylar he is in everything. But I, I do know who he is. So. Yeah. yeah. Mean Girls. The um, Office. He's The Office. He was, yeah, he's, again, he's one of those guys that's guest starred on absolutely everything. He pro- he pops up in a lot of Adam Sandler movies. Was he in that Halloween movie? <laughs> that, awful, that awful recent Halloween one? Yeah. He was the, the headless guy with the fingers. That was funny. He was with, yeah, he was married to Meyer Rudolph and he's hilarious. Any like it. serious scene when his head is just like levitating in his hands, it just made the scene. There's an outtake in the credits. Oh, credit shout out. <laughs> woot, woot. <laughs> we love credits on this show. Um, where he's just like sucking on these like fake fingers holding his hand. It's so gross. <laughs> And, and they're in Maya Rudolph is his wife. Yeah. She plays off of it really uh, well. They're great together. If you want a mediocre Halloween movie, which I know you do, even though it's probably Thanksgiving at this point, go watch. Hubie Halloween. It's yep. Skylar and I watched it over a series of nights where we just put it on at the end of the day, at the end of the night, but we're falling asleep. We probably watched it in like three nights. 12 minute intervals. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and. I, I don't know what the plot of that movie was. I don't even know what I've had a plot. I don't know, but I am down for any Halloween content, It's just, so. yeah, it's just Adam Sandler running around a town with random celebrity cameos that make no sense. Yeah. He was like, I just want to have fun shooting this. Yeah. So. Anyway, we've, we veered off. Before we get into these credits, just a couple more fun facts for you. You mentioned Reservoir Dogs. Yes. Reservoir dogs. That's really hard to say. Oh, I thought you were saying that I mispronounced no, it. No, I, I just mis- mispronounced it. And now mm-hmm. I'm saying it. So a funny story, and I don't know how true this is, but I got it off like the wiki fandom. Um, Michael Madsen, who was Mr. Blonde in Reservoir Dogs, uh-huh. who does the dancing scene. Okay, so so there's going to be a scene parody. There's a scene parody in the mo- in this this episode. Yeah, and in these credits we're getting into, they, like you mentioned, they kidnap the Moody Foodie. One of the characters, Reggie, does like a dancing to a song that is, they couldn't get the rights, obviously, to Stuck in the Middle with You, Uh because it sounds like Stuck in the Middle with You. Oh, I totally thought it was. It's not actually Stuck in the Middle with You. And so he's parroting Mr. Blonde, who dances around a a police officer they've taken hostage. Yeah. And cuts off his ear as he's dancing to this song. It's, It's a very disturbing scene. Yeah. But Reggie does gives him like a wet willy. That's his thing. So he's like yeah. licking his finger when he does it. Yeah. So Michael Madsen actually ended up on the set when they were recording this episode accidentally. Like he was supposed to be recording. He was shooting something at the studio what? nearby or something. Yeah. And he saw that they were doing a Reservoir parody and he wanted to just do a voice in the episode. So he does the voice of later in the episode, there's a clip of Kevin Costner in Tin Cup. Right. A movie that's mentioned. Yeah. And so he does the voice of... Kevin Costner's like one little line. That is a great story. I hope yeah. it's true. Yeah. That's amazing. And a less exciting fun fact for this episode is that there are more Linda Apron continuity errors. So th- oh, wow. during the first and like second season, I guess it has to do with like the animation they were using that, or something like that. That's your theory. Yeah. Uh, her apron that she wears around her waist appears and, re- appears and reappears in yeah. various scenes. I just feel like, because there, I think almost every episode has a continuity error. We don't know the answer to it, to this, like, but I don't know that you can blame it on the animation software. I feel like there's probably like last minute script changes and then like, and then there's just human error and you're like trying to look at the bigger picture and you just miss things. Yeah. Like, I think it's just human error. And then also if there's last minute changes in the script. Yeah. I'm sure there's all sorts of reasons. factors that play a role. Yeah. Uh, Biscuits passed out next to you and, oh, his eye moved when I said his name, but it was like rolled back into his head and he looked like he was dead. <laughs> I saw I'll try that. and get a picture of it for, for people listening. <laughs> I don't want to see that. It's very creepy. I, I, I assure you folks that he's alive. 
Let's get into these credits. Okay. I'm going to play the last minute clip, um, as we always do, before Great. we get into them. The family is deciding what Bob should do if the police get called on him for taking this uh, Moody Foodie hostage. Oh, by the way, Pat Oswalt does the voice of the Moody F- Foodie. I love him. Love, love Pat Oswalt. Remy from Ratatouille. Oh, I love that movie, too. He replaced Louis C.K. in the Pets sequel because Louis C.K. should not be doing a kid's movie or any movie. Nope. Uh, I'm not going to wear a dress. Pantsuit? Okay, fine. I'll go get some pantsuits! Such a show! Okay, so it goes right into the shot of the family in the kitchen. As usual, generic sequence. Bob, uh, Louise, and Tina prepping burgers. And then we hear that stuck in the mi- middle with you uh, knockoff song. Okay, am I crazy? But does it, it sounds like a mashup of the theme song and that there is the theme song in there but it's yeah yeah you're right i think i think it's a mashup of the two that's delightful yeah all right let's go all right reggie enters the scene dancing backwards into the frame of the kitchen yeah as louise goes to get the burger from her dad he's dancing if you go watch that scene you can just watch if you don't want to watch the full reservoir dogs movie but you should it's a great movie um, you can just watch like, you can just like, Google like stuck in the middle with you, uh, reservoir dogs. Scene, yeah. He's dancing just like Michael Madsen kind of dances with these weird, like, but he's the, we should mention that Reggie is the one who does the parody scene. He's dancing around, yeah. um, the moody foodie. He's licking his finger, preparing for the wet willy. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so that, that adds up. So it's the same same dancing. Same dancing, kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. And in, this, in these credits, he's backing into the scene, looking at the camera. So he's dancing around as Linda comes into uh, view in the window. He starts doing a lot of, like, pelvic thrusting. Correct. And I think he's going to lick his finger at one point, too. Yeah, and he has his finger, like, waving. Yeah, like, he's getting ready. He's ready. teasing, yeah. Here he goes, pulling it out. He's sucking on it, doing a little wiggle. His finger. He's sucking yeah, on his finger. On this, yeah, <laughs> not the ear. And then Gene walks into the scene as Reggie continues to dance. And that's it. All right. I have a question for you. Yeah. Did you want him to give someone a wet willy in the scene? I was hoping for it. I'm not going to lie. Maybe Gene. Gene Maybe walks Gene. in. He was unsuspecting. Or is Louise. it more satisfying that you're waiting for it and then it cuts? No, I want a wet willy. Maybe wanna, Bob. Maybe I someone think Bob. could freak out. Yeah. One of the kids seems kind of cruel from an old man. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Bob would be a good one. Yeah. Go over there and he can go, oh God. <laughs> you really could voice one of these characters. Right, it, if I just go really low, I'll just sound okay. like H. John Benjamin. I think we're seeing that they like doing that. They like cutting before the thing you kind of want to happen Mm -hmm. happens, which I kind of like. So the wet willy, nothing happens. And then um, I think it was Lobster Fest. Um, The band is getting ready to play and they go one, two, three, four, and then it cuts. Yeah. So I think that might be a recurring device that they use. What what did you like about those end credits? What did you not like? Okay. So first of all, that song, you cannot help But think of that scene, even if you haven't seen the movie, and you can't help but just be in a better mood when you hear that song. Like, it's one of those, if you're at a wedding, and you hate your life for being at this wedding, and that song comes on, like, you would totally, like... Dance like Reggie. Yeah. 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 I would would back into the, onto the the dance dance floor floor. and do a little little, Um, uh, finger licking, mm, finger, finger sucking. So, okay. Um, so I love that. I think the fact that it's mashed up with the theme is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, and once again, I like that they didn't go super obvious. They didn't have, um, the moody foodie in it. Uh, they took one of the side characters as the star of the credit. So I just really like it. Yeah, I'm with you. I like, I like the simplicity of it. It's not my favorite, but I do, I do like that. I do sometimes like when the family is just doing what they normally do and there's something happening around them and they uh-huh. don't Are acknowledge oblivious. it. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah. Were these end credits better than the episode itself? No. I agree. I'm with you. 
No, because and they they don't work without the episode. Right. Um, okay, I don't actually have any low lights besides maybe the urge that I'm like, oh, can you can you do something? Can you please stick you that wet finger in, in uh, to Bob's an ear? Oh, yes, you said oh, just specific. Okay. <laughs> What about you? Highlights, lowlights? Yeah, I just like I like the simplicity of it, and um, uh, lowlights is just it's what I like about it is also what I don't like about it. I want just a little bit more, but I also yeah. like this how simple it is. You're hard to please. Uh, yeah, you of all people should know that. I do. So we score on a scale of one to ten H's at the end of Tina's a. Uh. Yep. Uh, what do you give these end credits, Skylar? I like that. Yup. It's between 6.5 and 7. So I'll, I guess I'll say 7. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit lower. Yeah. With a 6. Okay. Yeah. I just, I, I like they the didn't dancing. Wow you. I'm not the biggest Reggie fan. Yeah. Um, I like, well, yeah. I like the reference, but it's just not, it's not a wow one for me. And how did you feel about the episode? I enjoyed the episode. I did too, but not. Yeah, it doesn't. It's it not was, my it's, it's one not of my, my favorite. favorite. And it, it's not it, top ten. I loved the tin cup references. I loved the <laughs> tin cup DVD with. The, they were. They loved that it had outtakes on it. Called Mulligans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'll just recite the whole episode to you. Yeah. So that's that. We got through the Moody Foodie and credits. We sure did. Um, everyone listening, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. It helps us out a lot. Uh, tell your friends about us. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we're Bob's Credits all across the board. And support us on Patreon if you can. We have gotten some feedback from fans who say they are interested in us doing like our um, evolution of specific character bonus episodes. We're still waiting to see if there's enough of a interest in that on our Patreon. So support us and we'll add another tier from there and we'll start recording those bonus episodes, I think, if we get enough. Yep. Enough interest there. That sounds um, great. Yeah. One of the characters I want to do first is Tammy. It's coming up next in our next episode. Next episode. Her very and first spoiler episode. alert. Spoiler alert. There's something very different about her and yeah. her first appearance. True. All right. Skylar, is there anything you want to... Is there anything you want to tell everyone before we go? I feel like you've got something you want to say. If you want to sing it to Stuck in the Middle of the You, you can. Stay saucy, stay saucy, you. Oh, I love it. <laughs>